this is a phone. You probably have one. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones, phone. right? As technology has developed, phones went from clunky, wired rotary devices to full-blown mini-computers that can fit into your pocket. Filled with instant access to the web and hundreds of millions of people around the world thanks to a wealth of social media and messaging apps. However, one of the biggest upgrades the mobile phone landscape saw was the developments in gaming. You went from Snake on your old Nokia to full-blown ports of AAA games like GTA San Andreas, first released on the PS2 and so many other high-quality titles all on your little phone. As a media property, Doctor Who has never exactly been a stranger to the mobile gaming platform, with games like Doctor Infinity and Mazes of Time. But in October 2020, it was announced that another Doctor Who game would be coming to phones. This was The Lonely Assassins, developed by Maze Theory in conjunction with Kaigen Games. The Lonely Assassins serves as a sequel of sorts to the Doctor Who episode Blink, with you, the player, discovering Larry Nightingale's abandoned phone, and working alongside units Osgood to track him down and solve the mystery. As you may know from watching this channel, I'm not exactly the biggest fan of the Weeping Angels, but are the creative game mechanics of this found phone puzzle game enough to make the Lonely Assassins an exciting new entry into the Doctor Who gaming world? Kaigen Games became known for games like Simulacra and Sarah's Missing, which both revolve around discovering someone else's phone and delving into the mystery surrounding them. It's no surprise then that The Lonely Assassins follows this formula, and I think Kaigen does a good job retooling this genre for Doctor Who, since there's a lot of potential with this style of game. It's fun to delve into Larry's phone and explore this paper trail, there's a lot to do and it has a satisfying sense of progression as you unlock more parts of the phone, such as uncovering glitched emails and texts, opening up all these new clues over time. However, now this was probably just a smooth brain moment for me when I was playing it, but with the first round of clues I had to backtrack as soon as I realised you need to actively scan things to be able to send them to Osgood, which was pretty annoying, but I think that was probably just me not reading properly when it told me to do the scanning. What was definitely a flaw in the design though was how it almost punishes you for gathering all the clues first and then taking them back to Osgood in one pile. When I play games, I try to fully complete each round in one sweep, which is probably why I never even made it a third of the way through The Witcher 3 or Fallout 4. Each time you gather your evidence, you go back and send it away to Osgood, who progresses the story. So if you do it all in one like me, you end up spending a painfully large amount of time texting Osgood, who is constantly telling you stuff you already know. It gets really repetitive, even if you are doing the clues one by one like you're supposed to. There were so many points where I was too far ahead of the game with the clues I'd gathered, yet I was still locked into these very limited responses, despite me knowing what certain things meant because of the next clue I had already found. It's quite frustrating since you have to wait for the game to catch up to you. There are rarely ever responses you can select to skip sections, so it makes things feel a bit patronising and slow. I do think my experience suffered from playing the Steam version since it doesn't quite translate well. The the whole point of the game is to simulate your phone being Larry's, so it's not nearly as immersive or atmospheric on PC. I always felt a bit detached from the experience. I think the style of the game lends itself to some very interesting gameplay mechanics. There's a fun sequence where you have to refer back to an email exchange and pretend to be Larry to bluff your way into unlocking a video download, using context clues so you can make it through the conversation without getting caught. It's a neat way to use the format's potential and progress the story along. There's another mechanic where you have to battle a weeping angel inside your phone by trying to delete it as it moves around the device, corrupting files and trying to break free, making you go on this chase through all the apps as you try and stop it. But it only comes up maybe twice and it's the main gimmick besides the scanning, so I think they could have done a bit more of it, and it also just doesn't really feel very threatening besides one encounter. I do feel as though the game doesn't try to push the format to its full potential, since you often feel quite uninvolved, especially during the climax, where all you really do is position some cameras between some cutscenes. There's a real lack of interaction in quite a few sections of the game, which made it a lot less enjoyable for me, but again, that probably just stems from me playing on PC and on stream so I wasn't truly immersed into the game like I might have been otherwise, especially because the style of game means you're inherently detached from events like the climax, so there's not really much Kaigen could have done to improve that climax. 
Okay, so since this is a narrative driven game, let's talk about the story of the Lonely Assassins. The game starts off incredibly promising, with an interesting setup regarding Larry's disappearance and the initial clues only serve to muddy things more. So you have a real itch to delve deeper and work out how everything comes together. It makes it fulfilling to start piecing all these clues together, but there are still some completely bizarre happenings that don't make sense until the end. The pacing is good and these revelations almost come like dopamine hits to keep you invested. They're spread throughout the story quite well. However, it is quite a predictable story. I found myself having worked most of it out pretty early on. Sometimes I'd see the first clue in a new plot strand and immediately work it out before the game even called attention to it. Whilst that can be satisfying at times, like I mentioned before, it gets annoying with the Osgood repetition. Nothing about the plot is unpredictable, which is a huge shame, because the setup opens up a lot of possibilities for unexpected revelations. Probably the only thing that comes as a surprise is the secret ending, which I unlocked by doing the optional side quest about gathering clues regarding the Doctor. Without spoiling you, it's a baffling post credit sequence, and it changes a character's fate in one of the most Chibnall Who style ways possible. It makes no sense as to why it isn't the reverse of what plays out. If you've seen the secret ending, you'll know exactly what I mean, so go look it up if you want to know what I'm talking about, since it's kind of a messed up ending when you really think about it. Aside from the style of the gameplay, the other big draw for the game is the villain. The Weeping Angels are probably the most well-known and mainstream Doctor Who monster next only to the Daleks. Pretty much everyone knows what a Weeping Angel is, so it's no surprise that they're the focus of this story, especially since Maze Theory seems to really like them, having also been in the Edge of Time VR game. I understand why the Angels are the villain of the Lonely Assassins, and their abilities are quite well integrated at points, blending well with the format, which, to be completely honest, probably wouldn't have suited most Doctor Who monsters. However, the game is very inconsistent with how it treats the titular monsters. Sometimes it goes by the rules established in Blink, since it is a sequel to that story, but then other times it follows the logic and lore introduced in Time of Angels and Flesh and Stone, so you often find yourself scratching your head as to why certain things happen and others don't. And when you're appealing to a Doctor Who crowd, you have to make sure the logic is sound, because we all know how much Doctor Who fans love continuity. I, I haven't had a meaningful human interaction in months. My biggest criticism of the game is that there's no real horror. It's supposed to be a horror mystery game that keeps you intrigued and scared, but I never really felt like there was any tension. It attempts a couple of jump scares here and there, but they're just not very good. There was only one which maybe got an ever so slight jolt from me, and that was just because of the loudness rather than it being a payoff to some tense moment. I actually saw loads of opportunities for jump scares or creepy moments that never even happened. There's a section where you go through some photos of Wester Drumlins with angels in some of the windows. I was expecting them to move positions each time you left the image and came back, but that never happened. It's a massive missed opportunity in my opinion. There are just so many good moments that they didn't capitalise on. Also, the ending of the game is supposed to be really intense and scary, but I didn't find it to be either, since the angels won't shut up. They keep talking like they're from some bad creepypasta trying to be sinister and taunting you and Osgood, but it just doesn't work and comes off more comical. There's one character in particular who becomes an angel, but you can't at all take them seriously, since it's a much worse version of the angel Bob stuff in series 5, monologuing the angel's plan and threatening you with what they'll do to you once they get free and catch you. As I said, sometimes it borders on accidental comedy, so it completely derails the atmosphere of the game and, most importantly, the ending. It's a real shame because the game is so promising and it does some fantastic things with the Weeping Angels, but it really drops the ball of them when push comes to shove. One of the best parts about Blink was how silent and almost passive the angels seemed to be, but the Lonely Assassins tries too hard to take that Series 5 approach to them being more conventional villains. One of the best parts about this game, though, is the world it builds. You can tell so much work went into this game's universe. Even though it obviously draws most of its content from Doctor Who, there's just so much depth, which I really appreciate since the game is pretty short, yet has so many web pages and articles to read through. There's an absurd level of detail detail, a lot of thought was put into making this feel like a living, breathing universe, and that really shines through. You genuinely feel as though you're in the Doctor Who world as you delve through these conspiracy theory forums, and find fleeting mentions of mysterious blue boxes and evil stone statues. It feels like a very realistic take on the universe within the show, perfectly balancing the normality of our own world with the mystery of Doctor Who for a great effect. There's so much great fluff buried within the phone with no real bearing on the plot, but they're just good easter eggs. 
However, one drawback of the world presented in the game is how many Doctor Who characters seem to know each other. There are a number of characters from the universe who play varying roles in the narrative. It's fine with characters like Rani from the Sarah Jane Adventures, now a journalist who is in contact with Larry prior to the events of the game, but other TV characters are featured or referenced in their own ways, and I'm not a huge fan of how small it makes the setting feel. Most of the references are unnecessary and it feels like the game is trying to bait nostalgia out of you because as a player you know who they are. It's kind of like how Star Wars has 5 planets and 100 characters in an entire galaxy. You know, sometimes not everyone should be connected. When it comes to the Lonely Assassins, it's important to remember there's almost never been a truly good Doctor Who game before. If you, for some reason, doubt that statement, check out the entire series I made going through the whole history of the show's attempt to conquer the gaming landscape. So, with that in mind, where does the Lonely Assassin stack up? I'd personally say it's one of the better ones out there. The format is really creative with some interesting mechanics and a pretty good mystery setup. It's a fun sequel to Blink, paying off the fact that the angels were left there in West of Drumlins. It's nice to see Larry again, although they had to write Sally out of the story, because Kerry Mulligan is too famous and busy now after Promising Young Woman. A lot of the puzzles in the game are fun, but I do think there could have been a few more mechanics introduced, since things get pretty repetitive at times. The Weeping Angels are also mishandled in my opinion, but they're at least used well occasionally. It's not really this game's fault I don't like the villain that much anymore. The main attraction is the depth of the game, since the universe is very fleshed out. It even teases bits of Series 13, and ties itself back into the whole time fracture, splintered unit stuff going on in other media, so it feels very interconnected with the wider Doctor Who ecosystem. I think the game is worth it for the £4 price tag, since it's about 2 hours long at minimum, and and that's without delving deep into all the extra fluff and articles you can read. Unfortunately, there's not a huge amount of replay value, since the narrative doesn't really branch out, but I think it's an enjoyable enough experience if you know what you're getting into and want to pretend for just a couple of hours you're in the Doctor universe. It's definitely a worthwhile experience, for better or for worse. Compared to the terrible platformers and arcade games the IP has put out before, The Lonely Assassins is a refreshing glimpse into an optimistic future of creative and inventive Doctor Who games. It really gives me hope that the franchise can start to integrate its storytelling diversity into the gaming medium, so I look forward to seeing whatever comes next. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. And I'd just like to give a very special thank you to my Gold Level patrons. Alex Marston, Calvin, Daniel Shilato, Franz Horn aka Lime Vortex, John, Ross, Stephanie Ever Miller, and William Jewell. Thank you so much for your support.